So we're going to talk about cryptocurrencies and really I'm going to have everybody um, introduce themselves and answer the first question, which is um, use cases. So we're going to talk about you know, Bitcoin itself. Um, we're going to talk about um, private and permission blockchains. We're going to talk about um, priced digital assets, which are known as altcoins or app coins, of which I think there's going to be a number of uh, applications in the space. So, but the actual use cases, from what I can tell in this space, what the main ones are, are the B2B, which is rights and royalty management, which is tending to go to blockchains, um, and then um, uh, payments and promotion, which is tending to go to um, priced uh, um, digital assets. So um, my background, um, Transform PR is the number one PR firm in the world for um, uh, digital currencies, um, blockchain companies, Bitcoin companies. I got into it about three and a half years ago. We still do other digital media and other uh, technology companies, but we've worked with about 60 companies in the space, um, launching them, promoting them, including Ethereum when they first started out and about 20 other coins. Um, social Radius is a social media marketing firm. And we also, as part of the overall Transform Group, which is the full name of the company, um, have a cryptocurrency consulting group um, where we've actually created coins for clients and are working on a few of our own. Um, mo most notably, uh, Halsey Miner from CNET um, and uh, um, co-founder of Salesforce.com <clears throat> hired us to uh, create a cryptocurrency for virtual reality called the Voxel. Uh, we did a half a million dollar crowd sale. It's uh, currently trading in the top 50 coins and uh, um, you know has, has got a very interesting uh, future. So um, um, I'm going to let everyone um, introduce themselves. I'll start with our replacement uh, 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 panelist uh, since Steve wasn't able to make it. Um, or Ned, um, Tone Vase. Uh, Tone is, uh, is an old friend of mine. We've spoken all over the world, and uh, we've got a couple of blockchain folks here. And uh, I will. Uh, I, I need. I th felt I needed to have a uh, that that rare breed, kind of like the California Delta smelt now of a Bitcoin purist. So uh, Tone, give a little bit about your background and answer the question of whether you think that that kind of covers it in terms of uh, use cases, um, micropayments, and uh, using blockchains and um, rights management, sorry, rights management using blockchains and um, cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin for uh, payments. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me uh, fill in the spot. Uh, my name is Tone Vase. Uh, my background is in Wall Street and uh, quantitative analytics. I, was, uh, I recently left uh, that space about a year ago uh, because I got very interested in Bitcoin uh, probably about three years ago now. And um, in the Bitcoin space, I'm a... Uh, doing research and uh, advising Brave New Coin, uh, which is a company in the digital space as well. Other than that, I mostly just write, and I'm a blogger, and I'm a trader, but traditional trader, not cryptocurrency trader, which is very popular these days. Uh, to get right into your questions, uh, like Michael said, I have a slightly different view on blockchain, and I know the word is being thrown out a lot, and the definition of a blockchain uh, will be very different depending on who you ask. Uh, and it's interesting that you brought up permission ledgers as well. Uh, to me, uh, the term private blockchain or permission ledger, to, to me that's not a blockchain. To me that's just a shared database uh, between entities that have similar interests. Um, it's very nice that you know this blockchain, uh, I guess, craze has brought up the idea of having a shared database but I don't believe it has the traits of a blockchain, and uh, Bitcoin has been the one and only successful blockchain up to this point, in my opinion, and what Bitcoin does is it basically transfers a digital asset and an asset of value um, around the world, and all you need is a, comp a computer to do so, and there's two things that are important in this, um, in this transaction is that one, is your transaction is final the moment you hit the send button, and two, the transaction is immutable. So that means there's no party in between that can A, censor, or B, reverse that. Um, uh, there, there are some applications that I can like brainstorm of how it can help digital, uh, uh, I mean, music rights and uh, within the music space, but th these are complicated questions. Anyone that, that's bringing you a solution, right, a blockchain solution right now, uh, to the space, I would seriously question it because uh, th this is completely new. There is very little science that has been done on this so far. 
Um, now, the one quick up, one example, because I don't want to take up all the time, one quick example I can give is that Bitcoin has a limited supply. So an artist can now consider uh, an idea of, well, what if I release only a million of my songs with my cryptographic signature on each song, and then there are only a million of these. Now, granted, the song can be listened to, but only a million people in the world can actually own a song signed by me. So it would be like a digital signature instead of a hand signature on a piece of paper. And those million songs are just a million. People can lose them, people can get hacked for them. It's like only a million pieces of an art. So that is one thing that no one's mentioned that's something to think about, which I find very, very interesting. Maybe someone else can talk about micropayments, which is another great uh, application. Thank you. Ali? Uh, I'm Ali Shikar. I'm part of an organization called Triplo Global. Uh, we are a product services firm. We build uh, digital products for our clients. Uh, we are spread across uh, five countries, about 750 employees. Uh, we build a lot of different softwares for a lot of different clients, mainly involving monetizing data, as well as uh, trying to do that while using innovative technologies. As you can see, how right tax and blockchain fit into that. Um, from the perspective of you know, where I see the music industry being using it, I see it in three key places. The operational benefit of, say, what we are talking about publishers and keeping the records and all of that. From the point of view of the artist, the payments and the royalties, uh, making that two-year payment down to seconds. And thirdly, there is an aspect to the end user where someone uh, the end user who's listening to the music uh, gets a benefit of it. Having said that, new technology, there's a lot of things that we are learning uh, right now, um, more from the technical point of view as well as the usage. I don't, as it grows, there would be a lot more use cases. The same thing of where the, while the internet or the internet was coming up, we were doing publishing as the core piece of it, and it evolved over time. So I, I would say there are a lot of use cases we don't know yet, we'll see in the future. Um, and finally, in the sense of what needs, what can we do as a group here, this being a right step for summit to move it forward, um, is to not just look at the technology. As you can say, you can see innovation from both from the business perspective, find a problem, try to solve it, or in this case, you have a technology in front of you, you're trying to apply it of how I can use the technology to the industry, but still try to merge it together, still think of the problems first and you know, the technology second in this case as well. More importantly, uh, focusing on the distribution part of it. Uh, one uh, interesting thing uh, I heard one of the panelists say before is, forgetting about Bitcoin, if it being successful or not successful, or blockchain being successful or not successful, the concept of distribution is proven in the world to be successful, both from the standpoint of internet, as it stands itself, uh, from the standpoint of uh, people who are familiar with the programming word Git, uh, as well as some basic concepts of you know, Merkle's tree distribution. That is a successful platform for both the industry as well as the digital world, and blockchain will evolve over time, and this is definitely something that will stay. All right, I'm Cedric Cobbin, uh, founder of PeerTrax. We started about two and a half years ago, but I actually uh, stumbled on Bitcoin in 2011, and it led me to uh, look at all the different 2.0 projects, the non-purist uh, blockchains, <laughs> the 2.0 technology uh, that relies on building their own blockchains, their own little applications. And uh, we embarked on this project, and like Michael was saying, every five weeks is a breakthrough. So we've been building on quicksand. Every time something changes, something changes, something new, you, you have to factor in. So it's been very interesting. Uh, what we, um, to answer the question uh, specifically, where we see uh, the actual blockchain tech being used is not only in the right. So we're in Rights Tech Summit, so obviously, yeah, it's a great place to have a centralized, a decentralized central database, if that makes sense. Uh, but I think the main things uh, that nobody's talking about is the royalty payments directly. Right now, we're using different, uh, so the conversation is basically, 
we will use cryptocurrencies as a way to cheaply send transactions. Great for microtransactions, okay, but that's still human sending money to human. What we're saying is we can change the game similar to uh, what Steemit has been doing, where the blockchain itself will pay content. All the humans that will be doing is listening to music, producing music, and telling the blockchain where to send the block rewards. For those that aren't aware exactly how it works, block rewards is something that happens every 10 minutes on Bitcoin. They send 12.5 uh, Bitcoin to whoever solved a puzzle. What we're doing is taking that exact same concept, only we're paying the royalties directly on streaming. So if you're a streaming company like Spotify that's been in the red since forever, uh, paying 70% 70 70 of their, their income to, uh, to royalties, the business model we have, we would actually get subsidized by a blockchain. So if you take, for example, Spotify, say they connected up to a blockchain that paid block rewards in cryptocurrency directly to the artist, Spotify never holds your funds, so it's never sending funds, there's no black box. It's just reading what the spin history is, the play history is, and sending that money directly to the artist. It bypasses not only a bunch of companies, it bypasses humans. It goes straight from a blockchain to the content creator, the royalty uh, payment people. So that's one thing that nobody has really talked about. Uh, it can pay the curators as well. So people that are finding music, that are discovering music, so Reddit, very simple, upvote when you like, downvote when you don't. The blockchain can pay who finds music before anybody else. This makes everybody, every hipster, into a talent discovery, uh, a talent scout, basically. So if you're a little you know, unknown artist and you show up and you put your music there, odds are you're a needle in a stack of needles and you'll never be listened to other than your, your aunt, right? You only have a couple plays, maybe. Now, with this system, it incentivizes people to dig for, all, for music that will catch on. If I find a song that nobody knows of and I upvote it, I'm actually going to get paid uh, block rewards. So that's two things that I think are very important that can change the entire game in the music industry that are parallel to the whole, oh, we can solve the actual uh, rights issue. The third thing I would say, and that's kind of what uh, the title of the panel was, is regarding crypto USD and uh, so bit USDs, basically a cryptocurrency that's pegged to a dollar amount. Right now, Bitcoins, uh, Litecoins, all the other coins, they act like stocks. So one day they're worth 700 bucks, the next day they're worth 900. If you're an artist getting paid in a cryptocurrency, not the best because you're not a trader, you're, you're, you're an actual artist. All you want is to be paid for your music. If one day you have 20 bucks, all right, I got 20 bucks for my songs, and the next day it's $13, not everybody's gonna take that, uh, not everybody's gonna accept that. So the innovation with a bit USD is that you, you do have nowadays, it's still in its infancy, because five weeks ago it wasn't, but um, you have a cryptocurrency that can be sent for zero transaction fees, uh, so free payments globally, instantly, as small or as big as you want, but they maintain their value. So I think that's the third thing that, uh, that, mu that, that the blockchain can really bring to the industry. And I have a fourth one. <laughs> fourth one would be talent discovery. So you can also have every single artist or every single song have a value on a market. And if you hear that song and you think it's good, you can actually invest in the song or in the artist. And that's another way to, to discover talent. You'll have uh, undiscovered kid, he's going to be the next Justin Bieber, whoever. You want to invest in that person and now, next thing you know, your holdings, your digital holdings are worth much, much more because you brought that kid into light. So that's a fourth... Uh, I think uh, can, I, sorry, can I, think I... Number two and number four were discovered. Can I disagree with some of that real quick or we're low on time? No, no, we, we, I, I was, I was, I was going to make a comment too before I went to the next question, so <laughs> you can go first. All right. Uh, there's a couple of things I, I, I happen to disagree with that. Um, Bitcoin payments, they're, they might be quick, but they're not free, and they're not even that cheap at the moment. And the reason is, is because it's a scarce resource. And uh, the mining structure that supports it, and Bitcoin, uh, Benji explained the Bitcoin blockchain pretty well earlier today, uh, there's a global mining network that supports it. And the world doesn't owe anyone in this room or me or anyone in the world 
a free database uh, to notarize and uh, stamp anything you like, uh, the, the world also doesn't owe you a free means of value transfer, right? So, so you have to pay for that. And that's why there's a big debate in the Bitcoin space. Why is it you know, becoming more, more and more expensive to send Bitcoins? Because there are people willing to pay that. Uh, so, so I don't think there will be a free solution. Also, I forgot to mention Steam in my earlier, um, <laughs> in my initial uh, uh, talk, and uh, Steam was mentioned again. I believe that Steam is running a Ponzi scheme, um, so I would not recommend anything uh, similar to Steam. Um, I'm actually very, I've been very, very vocal and critical of what they think they, they're calling a the blockchain. Um, so I would, again, caution people to think twice about getting on or thinking about that model, but that's also my opinion. So I was going to say, you've sort of mixed a couple of things as if they could all kind of go together. I think the discovery element, if you have your own cryptocurrency and you're creating value out of it and you give people for discovery, because discovery is something people hadn't heretofore been paid for, it's fine if it's worth tenths of a penny now and you're getting it and keeping it, hoping that engagement will make it worth a dollar someday. On the other hand, for royalties, if you are... Um, told that you were supposed to be receiving $75 this month or 75000 and you end up getting it in sort of a created cryptocurrency that is not Bitcoin, which has sufficient volume and liquidity to transfer to US, US dollars or another top 10 coin that has that, um, you're not really fulfilling your contractual obligation. And just putting BitUSD, which I think is also kind of built on House of Cards, I think Tether is not because it actually has money in a, in a bank that backs it up. Um, as opposed to algorithms that, that still, if the algorithmic base goes to zero, you can't really uh, do much on the algorithms. Mm -hmm. So um, were you referring to all of these things coming from a created coin or coming from something like Bitcoin or dollars coming in to pay royalties? All right. So the, uh, on the transaction part, Bitcoin does have, I think it's four cents per transaction. It it, it varies based on traffic. Usually, right. uh, so usually, four, usually can four be to zero ten if you cents. want to wait a week. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. Four, four to ten cents, we'll get it there within 10 to 20 minutes on normal traffic conditions. Right. So this is why I'm saying there are innovations in the space. Bitcoin has the mining. There's a lot of... Uh, it, it's, it's the first model, basically, of blockchain. That's why I'm not pro uh, putting everything on Bitcoin. This is why a, a, a different... Things have come out, for example, rate limiting, which means that transactions on a blockchain are free. They're 100% they're free. It's exactly the old system that the banks use, where if you have 200 bucks you try in your checking account, you go to an ATM, they charge you a buck 50 to use the ATM. If I have 2,000 in my checking account, I can use the ATM for free. That system already exists. That system exists. If you have a, a small balance, then you can use a blockchain for free, unlimited. Uh, you know, with a daily limit, basically. So you can actually pay out royalties for free. That I mean, zero friction. Nobody's right. taking but a that, cut. But again, that depends on your definition of a blockchain. What you just described is not a blockchain to me. It's a database. So let's let's oh, but, use that term. Oh, and yeah. again, what you just described okay. was more of the SWIFT system, which I think is absolutely not a blockchain. Right. Actually, no. That, that's how uh, Steam does it. They they simply have instead of having you pay a fee, a, a, a fee or percentage, you merely have a little s balance in your account. I understood, but Steam is, you know, creating from nothing uh, a cryptocurrency that is speculative and goes up in value, and it has not gotten to the point of where Bitcoin, I think, would take a huge, um, you know, amount of uh, negative uh, actions to go and make Bitcoin relatively worthless. It, it, you can, you've, got a, you've got $10 billion well, worth that you can do it, whereas, and it does have money going into the system, whereas people will buy things for Bitcoin. With Steam, nobody buys anything. It, it, it also okay. comes down to security. Um, the, if anyone says they have a blockchain, just ask them one question. What is securing your blockchain? Where is the security in your blockchain? And Bitcoin has an answer. We have a global mining system that burns electricity at a rate of like millions of dollars a day. That's security. Um, I, if someone's bringing you a blockchain, ask them what, they're, what is securing their blockchain and uh, chances are it's gonna come down to a database or a very insecure version of Bitcoin. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have a, a steam moratorium the rest of the panel since I think we probably spent a little bit too much time on that. 
um, other than as it relates to some of the things in your model. Good. Um, I'll, so I would like well, to yes. add something on the you know, transaction piece and some of the pieces. Again, we are right now we are discussing about transaction fees and like how that directly uh, you know, affects the users. Now, again, if you think about it purely from the sense of uh, a business perspective, uh, we made a trading platform and made uh, successful not only a coin, but a trading system tied it back to into real business for one of our clients. We did all of that in what, three to four months from concept to production, enterprise production with like a very huge user base. Same thing, uh, we never you know, went down to, oh, we like Bitcoin, we like Ethereum, we like Hyperledger, the base idea being we want to make this fast, agile, and into the market as quickly as possible. You know what we did about the transaction costs? We actually did something every technical architect in the world hated, where we hid it from the user that this is even a blockchain at all, and we were like funding their uh, blockchain wallets by tiny uh, amounts automatically every time they traded. It was a huge hack in behind the scenes, but the point was it was in production being used by users, users don't have to understand transaction fees, and this alternative means of revenue. Revenue can come from a lot of places. Once you have a large user base, data can be monetized. If even at right now, if you suffer the cost of the transaction fees, there's a long-term play. Company like Circle. Circle is trying to change the payment systems around the world. They do that, they let you do free transactions uh, but at the end, even if you ask some of the circles guys, they don't care. They're like right now, Bitcoin is supporting us because it has a large background. If tomorrow something else comes, we will change. The focus of our business is to make payments easy, not to make Bitcoin ahead, not to make blockchain ahead. These are just enablers, and we just need to keep that in mind. So I, I'm, I'm going to la ask one sort of last question before we get to uh, some questions from the audience. And this uh, really comes down to... Um, what the solution is going to look like, because you know, I, in an ideal world, we'd mentioned B two B, we'd mentioned uh, B two C, and we just mentioned discovery. Um, blockchain, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's an altcoin, whether it's a private permission to blockchain, um, you know, we've we've certainly had our issues over quote immutability, right? So immutability is what's been used for Bitcoin, and it's kind of one of these hot button words like is the Pope really infallible in all things? I mean, that's really <laughs> how it's discussed. And I, 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 when I refer to sort of another blockchain that still has a pretty good reputation, obviously the other immutable blockchain had been Ethereum, but we know that's not the case anymore. It's been blowing nope. up. It's actually had two <laughs> unimmutable incidents in the last uh, four weeks. Uh, five, three, actually, if you include the DAO hack. Um, so, uh, and obviously, Bitcoin is only immutable until something happens there, because technically, if you got 95% of uh, the miners to agree on something, and they can't even agree on increasing the reward, the um, block size from one uh, meg to two megs, uh, you you would be able to go and roll things back 51% of tax. So, we'll call immutability immutability light, and perhaps with some of these blockchains, at least they've been sustainable. So. Um, so basically, if we're looking at what the holy grail is five years from now, and we have a system that everyone in the industry uh, adopts, which typically happens in an industry that wants to have one standard, um, will it be, number one, um, Bitcoin and just other things tacking onto Bitcoin because that's the immutable blockchain and the one that most people uh, have supported to this point. So you'd have side chains on top of it, you have fiat pegs on top of it, as sort of the uh, initial title would suggest. Or is it going to be, you know, a permissioned blockchain for rights and some some uh, some um, uh, set of other ones that are basically done by startups as opposed to an industry consortium? I'll start with you. I'm biased. I would say it's not the, the former, so I don't think everything will revolve around Bitcoin. There are extremely good uses to the, the main analogy, which was it's a good store of value and you, you can't attack it. It's just going to be there forever. Uh, so th you can definitely do things with that, but I don't think the core of uh, many business models will rely on it. So if you have a, a company that's just trying to have, uh, you know, put their birth certificate or, or their copyright somewhere, they could put it in a, a database or a sidechain, and they could have it stamped in the Bitcoin blockchain. Like Factum does. 
Like Factum does, exactly. That, that's totally legit. And uh, I think it's a good use of that, that kind of uh, technology. But I do think the future of the music industry and the future of everything revolves around different blockchains. That technology, that invention that happened in, in 09 was just the beginning. Now we're going to see multiple versions of it uh, with their different flavors. There will be one tailored specifically for the music industry. And it doesn't have to be one. It can be one, and like Benji was mentioning earlier, you'd have a... Uh, a agnostic, you'd have, uh, like his, his uh, .bc would be agnostic on which blockchain is connecting to it. So if our blockchain could read the data on there and we could do the payments with uh, the BitUSD we're using, whereas somebody else running a startup could read Benji's .bc and pay through Bitcoin, that, that, that's what I think the future is going to be and the best one will win. Or there not even be a best one. There might be one that's very catered for the artist and one that's very, you know, for totally different, you know, selling rats. I don't know. I don't, it could be anything, really. I think. So, uh, yeah, from my perspective, I really see Bitcoin as an implementation of blockchain focused around cryptocurrency and the finance piece of it. Uh, it doesn't apply to everything. Blockchain in, in itself doesn't apply to all the problems. So I do see, specifically for the music industry, there has to be another solution. Uh, don't know what that's going to be yet, but probably would not be Bitcoin as it, on its own. Okay. Um, the second piece, it comes out to um, when people are trying to solve this, uh, it, the immutable part of it doesn't have to be guaranteed. It's almost, is it better than what we have today? We move from uh, applications that were being six, like billions of dollars in integration to people move to API-based system that it became easier to integrate. Now we are trying to move to a system where everyone is still building on their own stack, but it, because it's roughly the same, it's very easy and automatically just works together. I think that's where the industry is heading to. And if you're able to do that, if even if it's a blockchain specifically for just the music industry, but if everyone is on it, on their own right, that would work. Um, and that's why I see the industry heading, not just for music, but some of the other uh, pieces as well. Even if it's like 100, companies in the music industry do that, that is still better and stronger and more secure than one company. Hacking 100 companies is still harder than one company. I understand like hacking is a big problem and security is a big problem, but still, like it's not that straightforward. You can't you just go around and ch try and hack into 100 different companies at the same time. Tell them take us home here. Where do you see us? All home? right, so um, I will briefly mention what happened with like the Ethereum and the split, the blockchain got split into two. That almost happened to Bitcoin for those that haven't paid attention to Bitcoin for a few years, during a year ago during the Bitcoin XT versus Bitcoin debate. And I was on video actually describing word for word what just happened in Ethereum. I described how this could have happened in Bitcoin. Um, also, some of us predicted how the DAO was going to end, and it ended exactly like that. I have videos on that as well. But um, um, so I, I want to comment real quick what you said, making payments easier. That is very vital. The thing is, you don't need uh, Bitcoin to make payments easier. The problem with payments is the current regulatory structure on payments, known as anti-money laundering laws and know your customer laws. Uh, that is the biggest problem with payments. If uh, we had no money laundering laws and uh, KYC laws were very simple, uh, Bitcoin probably would have never been invented because there would be no need for it. Um, also, as far as a blockchain solution for the music industry, I don't know if the blockchain is needed as the solution uh, because the Bitcoin blockchain, and again, I, I'm focusing on Bitcoin because I think there will only be one blockchain with security of a global mining network. Like we only have one internet. Yes, there are a lot of intranets. Each company has an intranet. Um, and all the information on the intranets combined is probably greater than all the information on the public internet. But the world still uses a public internet, and there's just one of them. So I do believe that Bitcoin would be the backbone. Now, what will be built on top of it, we don't know yet. We're still getting there. It's early. Uh, but as far as the decentralization aspect goes, uh, Bitcoin was able to decentralize a method of payment which is very useful. Uh, and the reason why it's almost instant, takes about 10 minutes, is because it removes the regulatory overhead of a traditional payment. Now, um, 
All of you were able to receive an email within seconds back in 1999. There is absolutely no reason why your money couldn't have gotten to you anywhere in the world as fast as an email did back in 1999. So you want to think about what are you decentralizing? Is a decentralized solution right for you? The reason why Bitcoin is decentralized payments is because payments were being censored. That is also the reason why you always hear Bitcoin used in illicit activity. Well, it's because those are the payments that are most censored. So those are the payments where Bitcoin makes the most sense. Um, how censorship prone is the music industry or the digital rights? Is it a censorship problem? If it's not a censorship problem, then is a decentralized solution, which is a lot more difficult and not more efficient than a centralized solution, is that the right solution for you? And, and that is a question that um, you have to think about before adopting a blockchain solution for what you're doing. Um, what is the point of creating this decentralized structure? Is it beneficial? And I, I would say basically that the holy grail of sort of the private permission the blockchains in the rights industry is to have a immutability light where at least you have a permanent record that isn't going to get you know hacked in a honeypot with uh, all your records being downloaded by a Russian hacker. When you have cryptography on it, you might get to one record at a time. So um, do we have time for one or two questions or should we go to lunch? Um, we could probably take one question here. Is, okay. Anybody? We can also talk to them after, during lunch.